Well, you know, you try to prepare, and things happen, and then we go on. So, unfortunately, this morning, our projector that the hotel provided was broken. So, the PowerPoint, everyone that has registered, I will email you the PowerPoint along with Kendall's links and some of the links that Dr. Beckett's going to talk about today. I want to thank everyone, too, for your time this morning. It's a beautiful Friday, and I know you could be other places, so I appreciate the time that you've taken to be here this morning. That's our focus today, is business and education, partnerships and action. So I'll let you take that. Good morning. Thank you for coming. So if you're here today, you are representing a business, your own business maybe, maybe you're managing a business, but you're here representing the interests of your business. I know what it's like to be self-employed. Both my parents, my brothers are self-employed. We've had restaurants, construction companies. Brother was a massage therapist in Pittsburgh for about 25 years. Uh, albeit I'm self-employed um, passively as a landlord, uh, but I know what that is like. So growing up, answering my phone, Newlands Construction at our house, <clears throat> I know what it's like to have um, my father, I'm sitting on my bedroom floor with a typewriter, electric typewriter, I'm typing these contracts and they're triplicate, and he says, Jerry, don't mess up, they cost a dollar. <laughs> And I know, I remember what it was like for his customer that owed him six grand and the IRS wanted five. And I know what it was like when his business had to contract to replace the roofs on the Printing Town School for Boys, now minimum security prison in Taylor County. And he had to take loans out to be able to fund that job. Uh, and, six, and it was almost six months before he got a payment. The bank started calling at about three. So I remember those times. And I remember also um, what it's like on the other end, education. I taught 25 years in business education. So I know what it's like on both sides of that counter. Uh, and what my job, what I would like to do is to create relationships. I'm a liaison specialist. Uh, CTE stands for career tech ed, okay? It is the new term for the old vocational education. And what what it strives to do is give students a marketable skill set once they graduate high school. We want our students to either be ready for a job or a career or ready to go to higher education of some kind, which is not defined as, as clearly as it once was. Higher education is really now, there are six month certificates, year certificates, community technical colleges, two-year degrees, four-year colleges, master's programs, doc programs, higher education describes and, and encompasses more than it used to. So we want our students ready for a job or ready to go to, to some type of higher education. Typically, internships and job shadowing open up opportunities for businesses to grow their own workforce and it opens up opportunities for students to get these very, very important experiences. A lot of our students may never know what it's like to be on the other side of the counter. So having this personal relationship, uh, personal experience, either through job shadowing or internships, we want to bring our students into your business, bring you into the school system. I'm gonna take you to a form uh, that will, um, and I actually created four employers to fill out, to let us know what your needs are. And we'll look at that. Uh, but these opportunity, job shadowing is something normally a week or less. And the student really isn't performing any tasks there, uh, but they are watching or shadowing someone. So if they, and the way I would look at it is, if they liked it the first day, we'll ask them back for a second. If they liked it the second day, we'll ask them back for a third. After that, it kind of gets to be an attendance issue, but I really would like to do this with even our middle school students. Career exploration when I was in, in middle school was pretty heavy. We tore up lawnmower engines. I welded. I remember doing all these things, um, and we need that in our middle schools today. Uh, that's a very transitional time, 
and in a very transitional age uh, and good mentors, role models, experiences, opportunities are very important at that time. So, um, and there's a nationwide push for more uh, career exploration. So doing these job internships and these job shadowing opportunities, they're very different, they're unique. An internship is longer than job shadowing. It involves more of an agreement. Uh, we're gonna hear from um, some folks that one of our high schools is uh, getting an agreement with for an internship. So those things um, are more well better laid out. They can be paid, unpaid, they're unique. Each of these internships, job shadowing experiences are unique based on the student's need and desire and based on the business's need and desire to participate. So opening up these opportunities to give our students in Harrison County an opportunity to see what your business does is not only gonna help them, it's gonna help you. Growing your own workforce is a lot like growing our own teacher workforce now. A lot of shortages are happening uh, in a lot of industries, especially in education. So we have, I remember in the high school I taught in, there was a program that if you want to be a teacher, you could take these classes and in high school uh, and possibly get college credit in, in a teacher ed program in a college for doing that. So we're, they're growing, they're trying to grow their own there. And your company needs to become creative. The baby boomer generation is draining a, a huge expertise and knowledge drain on the system. If you're trying to compete with a business that does the same kind of work that you do for employees because you have a dwindling workforce, an aging workforce. So becoming creative and you know, not waiting till they're in college to give them an internship, like accounting firms and law firms, a lot of them will do that. And that's perfectly fine. Uh, but I have tried to get my high school accounting students into companies and they were just like, you know, we only work with college students. So some of these things happen informally um, and casually. Uh, when I taught at Liberty High School, I had two students. Uh, I had a relationship with Cape Credit Union, Clarksburg Area Postal Employees Credit Union. They would come and do a program called Mad City Money with our students. Uh, I developed a relationship with those folks and two of my kids went to work there during the summer uh, for about um, almost their whole summer. They enjoyed it. I love the glowing reports that I got back. That was absolutely wonderful. So that happened and actually their parents worked with the bank. I didn't, I wasn't involved in that formally, so there was no liability issues or anything like that. Um, and that's how sometimes things happen. And they can happen. And we want them to happen. Uh, there's, and I'm probably going to be trashing my whole PowerPoint at this point, but I want to tell you that it, and I could use it as a sketch, but um, there's an organization called Education Alliance. And this is a nonprofit funded by, totally by grants. And their purpose is to create partnerships and bring business and education and the community together. So they have summer internships. Um, in fact, there's like seven of them they have with different companies, Hope Gap, Hope Gas, Appalachian Power, um, several other ones that Toyota. <clears throat> and these are sometimes virtual, sometimes, most of the time in person though. But Education Alliance realizes the importance of bringing these things together. So that is one way that we can you know, look at what they have. They have models and things to go by. Um, having a meeting, sitting down and talking, discussing what you want out of it. How much do you want? You can, you can a student can shadow and, and learn about your whole company they can shadow and learn about a department in your company, and they can shadow and learn about a position in your company. So there are different types of job shadowing. Uh, the virtual ones I saw that I would have taken you to Educational Alliance, uh, it, it basically they're you know, on the screen and the students in the classroom are hearing and seeing the company. So there are ways to do it virtually. You can reach more students that way um, and more students, meaning kids that may be watching on their phone because nobody has a computer in the house or even a laptop. So we found out a lot during COVID about what our kids actually did and didn't have. So um, 
there's a lot of reason to grow your own workforce. There are ways to do it. Uh, there is, I want to actually, if you have a device with you, um, you can go to harcobo.net. It's H-A-R-C-O-B-O-E.net. And I wanted to show you all the programs that our high schools have. The CTE programs, Career and Technical Education. So these job internships and um, job shadowing and internships, sometimes these occur with students that are in CTE programs and they're in their fourth class. They have to pass four classes, take an assessment, do a portfolio. Uh, they're a CTE, Career Technical Education. If you're over 40, you might not um, no, that is the new term for the old vocational education. So once a student um, gets that fourth class, sometime in some of those programs, it requires them to have a relationship with the business and to go out and um, have, they usually call it an internship. Those things are um, sometimes ambiguously stated when it gets to that level because it can look like different things. So you don't want to nail it down too much and limit those opportunities. Uh, that may be something. And I, then I wanted to show you the programs that we have to see if you might be interested um, or so you're aware of what we do have. RCB has the most CT programs of any high school in the county. Um, they have JROTC, TV broadcasting, business and management, hospitality, human services. Mr. Davis? You're doing well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for the wall. <laughs> there I'll are. For you, so, here you go. <laughs> so, for those of you who are are on the website, um, just I'll look. tell H A R C O B O E dot net. I will say, God bless her. She spent so much time on this presentation. So, and I'm I not even using it. A little bit of time to look at it. It's very good, <laughs> yeah. uh, but. Each one of the schools actually in the CTE environment, you can go into the actual school itself and see what each school offers. So from a business standpoint, if you're looking at, well, I have an agriculture business and this is the type of people I need, you could look at what schools actually offer that program to very easily help you filter out where might you want to go and work with Dr. Beckett on that. So uh, it 100% does, and some of them have very unique programs. So even though RCB has the most programs, some of the schools have very unique programs that are very specific to their school. For example, Bridgeport High School has aerospace engineering, which is specific to that school, right? So it's a one, one and done. Um, South Harrison High School is getting ready to open up a meat lab. If you guys haven't checked that out. If you're in any industry that has to do with meat processing, food processing, anything like that, we've just spent over $220,000 at that school right now and pending more spending because inflation's killing us. But you know, it isn't killing anybody else in the room, right? No, no, okay, all right. Okay, I'm gonna stop on that, go ahead. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Mr. Davis. Yeah, I do have one question. Is it possible that if your homeschool does not offer the specialty that you can go to another school to take the CT? As far as the aerospace and ROTC, we do have students that travel from their home school to another school to get those classes. And it can be actually pretty easily um, arranged if you can do it um, enough ahead of time. Uh, there are even um, buses that you know take the kids back and forth. Uh, so, yeah, definitely. Yeah, to jump into that, Mr. Decker's here from Lincoln High School. He's the principal of Lincoln High School. And, uh, Appreciate him being here, but there there are, there are opportunities for that. Transportation is one of the most difficult parts of that. As we all know uh, bus driver shortages is part of the problem, uh, but transportation and master scheduling at each high school is different. So each high school has a different process. Some use block scheduling, some use uh, modified block. So it really kind of depends. But we do have students who travel to aerospace engineering. It's open for all. So if you have a showcase program, as we like to refer to them as. We try to open it up for all the students. Uh, if they can transport themselves, it's, it's certainly the easiest of all of those options, but it's also has some liability and things there too. So, uh, Mr. Decker, anything to that? Um, yeah, anybody that's interested, give us a call and, and we will work with you uh, on that. We all, most of the high schools in Harrison County offer more credits than are required for graduation, so even if there is some transportation issues, that's, that wouldn't stop them from graduating. Right. Uh, with that so we are very flexible with that we've had some experience sending our Lincoln High School students 
to Bridgeport High School to have that program. And uh, we look forward to anybody who would want to come to Lincoln. We have the Navy in Jersey. Um, so. Of course, we also have uh, United Technical Center, which is a whole different entity in and of itself that allows students to, and there's a whole transportation network for that. That's already kind of pre-designed and, and prepared for that. So lots of opportunities. It's just kind of one of those things where, and that's part of what we're trying to do is make sure that we streamline these. We're, we're looking at new programs every year. I'm actually in the process of adding some new programs next year at a couple of our high schools as well. Um, there's a lot of funding for the State Department. Legislature's put a lot of money into CTE. We really appreciate that. So right now is the time to make those moves as a county. Uh, to get our kids, you know, prepared for you all. That's really what it's boiled down to. It's not really about us anymore. It's when they're 18, what are they doing with their lives? And we want to give them a step in the right direction. And stay in West Virginia. That's another piece of that puzzle, too, which we all know a lot of our kids, they, they up and leave, and we don't want to see that happen. So, good. Thanks. Okay. The program he was talking about that we're adding, baking and pastry, there's also a Pro Start program at Liberty High School. Uh, these programs uh, prepare the students with specific skill sets. Uh, at the end of their program, they take a NOCTI assessment. Um, you may have heard of NOCTI. They, um, if, if the student scores high enough, they'll get a certificate that says that they are workforce entry eligible, that they have enough skills in that, in that area to be an effective entry-level employee in that field. Um, so how do we grow our own? job internships and job shadowing. I want to tell you about an example of one. Um, Mon Health, Stonewall Jackson Memorial Hospital is a local example that I can give you. Um, they, they have a three-day academy with students in Lewis County. Uh, they had it for two years in a row. Um, and <clears throat> one of the girls in the second group uh, decided to go to WVU in, in medicine to get a medical degree. Uh, a couple of the other girls considering health care as well. So growing your own involves kind of what this hospital did. They had a coordinator, a person who coordinated the whole program. Uh, they were actually going to do this with our South Harrison Middle School students this year. Uh, I went to see the lady earlier with our um, previous CT director. We had a discussion with her. Uh, we said, you know, we know you're doing this with the kids in your county. Would you do this with our students that are closest to the hospital, which is in South Harrison um, Middle School? Seventh and eighth grade is their target age. They take about 15 students. They do it over a break. It's a three-day opportunity. Uh, they expose her to different departments. They actually have a checklist, and the kids check off um, the four departments that they're most interested in to shadow. They do venipuncture simulator, drawing blood. They do EKG, take vital signs. They get certified in CPR, basic first aid. Not certified, it doesn't say basic first aid, but they learn about that. They journal daily. They sit at a table and talk about the educational requirements that are required uh, for uh, these different jobs that the kids are interested in and that they're asking about. So not only are they getting experience of seeing these jobs being done, they get to witness a surgery as well. Um, they leave out of there with a stethoscope, a logo shirt, they have scrubs, um, and a lot of memories and a graduation reception with their parents there on the third day. So that is how they do it. Uh, it is a permission form and an application um, and an interest survey to find out what the student is interested in. So our hope actually is that <clears throat> Stonewall Jackson Memorial Hospital, I found out where they got their inspiration was from a nursing program that had developed this uh, to try to grow their workforce in the nursing profession. And so Stonewall Jackson tweaked it um, and came up with their own. Uh, this is a, it's an opportunity. It really, truly is. We're hoping to work with UHC. I really want to do this with Stonewall Jackson. The, the coordinator changed jobs, though. So when she changed jobs, we were going to do it this spring break. Uh, but when she changed jobs at the hospital, the administrator, who's been wonderful, Kevin Stoniker, um, we're going to have to wait. Uh, they also do job shadowing there, though. They, they have this three-day academy, but they also do a one-day job shadow with the students in their county. 
So that's a small hospital. Is it easier to organize in a small hospital? Maybe. <clears throat> Is it possible to do in a large hospital? Absolutely. So our next conversation, um, after hopefully having this, starting small with this hospital and doing this with them uh, and taking them up on their generosity, uh, then propose this to UHC. Uh, 